Hello, back again with more about the APLcloud.com. Let's take a look at some of the things we can do with the APL programming language that is hosted at APLcloud.com. Uh, one of the first uh, things that programmers do in the APL world is they, uh, they clear. They clear the workspace, which removes all functions, variables, and gives you a clean slate. And then we're able to uh, begin to uh, experiment with APL. Let's start with something simple. We'll just type in some numbers. One, two, three, four. APL says, yeah, one, two, three, four. And I say, well, uh, five times one, two, three, four. And APL says, okay, that's five, 10, 15, 20. I say, I like that. I'm going to capture that and assign that to variable A. Now, hold it. What is this arrow? Let's talk about the APL symbols. There's many symbols that's used in the APL language. Now, some of these are called functions. They perform some type of a function like five times or divide. And uh, other symbols are used as operators, which can help uh, advance functions even further. In this case, I'm just using the left arrow. Now, all of the symbols to show here along the top, you're able just to hover over it and you get a pop-up. It tells you a, a cheat sheet of what that function or symbol is for, what it can do, <clears throat> and some examples. So in this case, the arrow is assigning the value on the right here, which is 5 times 1, 2, 3, 4, which we know is 5, 10, 15, 20, but I'm assigning it to a variable A. So I'll hit the enter key and now A has it. So A is a variable and it has uh, been assigned those values. Now I might also have uh, some text. I can just use the assign arrow and uh, put in the word test. So let me check the length of B. And row is another one of these very popular APL functions. A row will tell you the shape of something if you just have an argument on the right side of row. If you use it dyadically with an argument on both left and the right side, then it reshapes or restructures an object to a different form. All right. Now let's take a look at the row of B. Four. One, two, three, four. That's right. It's four elements in B, and I can count them. How about A? What's the deal with that? Row of A. Well, A is also 4. Well, let's get up here where I assigned A originally. I'm going to put in a few more things. I'll put in a 10, a 12, and a 22. So now I have a vector 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 12, 22, and I'm multiplying every one of these by 5 and assigning it to A. Now I have A. Now what's the shape of A now? 7. It has seven elements in it. Let me tack a few more things. A, comma, and let me say three more things. So I'll put uh, 20, I'll put 200, 300, and 400. That's nice, but A hasn't changed because I didn't tell it I wanted to change A. I just said to APL, just concatenate three more values onto A, and it did that for me. But I want to capture it, so I'm going to say A is redefined or assigned. A is assigned A, comma, 200, 300, 400. Now I hit the enter key, and now I have A has been redefined. If I check the shape of A, sure enough, it is 10. And now I might do something a little bold, like say, give me a 2 by 5 reshape of the values in A. Again, reshape in this case, is used dyadically, and we could go up and hover over it and see that reshape on the left side of the reshape function is the dimensions that you want to declare, and on the right side is the data that will be consumed or uh, acted upon. Right? So here we have A, and I want a 2 by 5 row of A. 
And that's what I got. Two down, five across, a two-dimensional array with the numbers that were in A. And if I wanted to capture this in, uh, I don't know, something called matrix, I might assign this. And now I have matrix. And the shape of matrix, as you might imagine, is a two by five. So that's a light introduction to the wonderful world of APL. And this is just a tip of the iceberg of what we can do with this very powerful language. And thanks for joining APLCloud.com. Have a good one.